guys, welcome to Better Bachelor. This is Joker with a face for radio and a voice for print. Man, you want to talk about epic levels of suckiness? Just here's the thing: we've all I've always said, and most guys say. Unfortunately, most guys don't listen. If a girl cheats on her man with you, and you fall in love, and this is your new girlfriend, people will tell you don't do that because she will cheat on you. And I've told this to friends of mine, dude, don't do not do this. I mean, if you want to have your fling, have your fling. But she cheated on another guy to be with you. What do you think is going to happen when you guys get together? Well, they get together and it's, oh, it's different. He was a jerk, but I'm awesome or I'm good or I'm this or I'm that. And then what do you get? I don't know, five months, a year, whatever later when she cheats on him. This is the look that you want to give your friend. Really, dude? shocking like there's no surprise to that what would you do if if a woman left you and then came back to you after you were a millionaire but before you weren't and what if she did that to you a couple of days or a month before her wedding do you think that she's really into you for you do you think she's a keeper if she'd bail on a guy that she was gonna marry to be with you because now you're captain wonderful or maybe because you're captain millionaire this is a story that just came out a couple of days ago and uh thank you to the user that sent this in to me uh check this out so i was heartbroken i never thought i would find someone like her this guy got so into one girl that basically he pined until he got her back which normally you'd be like, wow, that guy loved her so much. He chased her down and he he stopped the marriage. No, wait. And he rushed in and he confessed his true love before she said, "I." it's like a, this is like a, a what do they call it? A Hallmark movie, right? The only problem is that she didn't say yes until he showed up and had a lot of money. Anyway, it says, I was heartbroken. I never thought I would find someone like her. Uh, when recovering, um, when recovering alcoholic Justin McLeod set up his dating app, It was able to help him get over his heartbreak. Five years earlier, his college sweetheart, the woman he thought was the love of his life, had split up with him because he was had a drinking problem. He had subsequently gone to rehab and successfully uh, sobered up, but he had not been able to move on romantically. Okay, so if she was really into him, uh, I mean, if she was really, really into them, him, would she have waited around? I don't know, probably not. And I don't know as I'd blame her if, if he had problems like that. So she moves on, and he should have moved on, but he couldn't because he was all wrapped up in her. So listen to the quick tale of events that brings him back to her. He had subsequently uh, done that. Uh, Okay, so not comfortable going into bars because of his addiction issue. He started working on Hinge in 2011 to help him find a new partner. At the time, he was 27 and doing an MBA at Harvard Business School in Boston. So this bright guy, he says, I was heartbroken, never thought I would find someone like her. He had one-itis. He found his unicorn. Man, did he have Uh, one-itis. But he thought that the app would give him a fighting chance. So he created an app, um, and this was the same year, I guess, Tinder was invented, um, to help him find other women, I guess. With online dating services aimed at young people only just emerging at the time, Justin also hoped it would be a business he could try to make a success of. It got the wheels turning for me about uh, being an accessible, easy dating app for younger people who at the time didn't use dating services at all. I couldn't get the idea out of my head. So in 2012, Justin launched Hinge, the same year that rival Tinder was founded. Today's Hinge has about 5.5 million users around the world and reported annual revenues of 5.2 mil. Now that's revenue. Um, I don't know if that's income, but I can't see there being a lot of overhead for a phone app. Um, But in the romantic story so fanciful that turned into a TV dramatization, Justin didn't find a new love via his app. Instead, he was inspired to try to win back the heart of his lost love, Kate Stern. Man, what a made-for-TV movie this is. The chain of events started in 2015 when prompting Hinge, uh, or promoting Hinge, he was interviewed by journalist Deborah uh, Kopakin for an article in the New York Times. At the end of the interview, Ms. Kopakin asked him if he had ever been in love. Justin opened up how he had been in, how he had loved and lost Katie or Kate while they were both still college uh, uh, students at uh, Colgate University in Hampton, New York State, because of his uh, drinking. The journalist replied that she had a similar love lo- lost love story, but she had never acted on it and now feared it was too late. 
Her story encouraged me to go and give it one more shot, but it had been seven years and I thought it would be too late. Okay, so get this, right? They dated for a short while in college. She just bounces on him. Maybe justified. Um, I, I'm sure he, he sounded like he had his issues. So maybe she, she justifiedly bounced on him. If she was really in love with him and really wanted to be with him as much as he is with her, wouldn't she stick around and work harder in getting him like cleaned up and help? Probably. But he had one itis. He had one itis so bad that for seven years, he couldn't stop thinking about her. In the meantime, for seven years, she has not thought about him once. Because otherwise they would have been in touch or she would have found out that he straightened his life out and she would have come back. Because we know that. Girls will put their feelers out and come, you know, kind of, hey, what's going on? How you been? Haven't talked to you in a while. We get our exes to do, we, exes do that all the time. Both girls and guys do it, right? So he says, okay, I guess I'm going to go out, reach out and, and, and see what's up with her. So here we go. Um, but freshly emboldened, Justin flew to Switzerland. So he found out, I guess... Or maybe talk to her. They don't really explain that. Where he knew that Kate was by then living and working. Okay. So she moved away from the United States. Wasn't anywhere in the area. Could care less about this guy. Moved to another country. She was living there. Despite her being due to get married in one month's time, she agreed to meet him. Now, how many times do women pull this? It's just lunch. Yes, he's an ex-boyfriend. But I haven't seen him in seven years. We broke up in college. There's nothing there. I'm not even thinking about, not like that. He's just an old friend at this point. I just want to reconnect and see how he's doing. We hear this sometimes, don't we, guys? Or, uh, yes, he's an ex-boyfriend, but um, it's nothing like that. He's like my brother now, right? Okay. So she agreed to meet him. Within a couple of days, her wedding was off, and she and Justin were back together. Shocking. I wonder if it has anything to do with the moolah. And even if it didn't, even if she, they just had this amazing connection, can you imagine your soon-to-be wife coming to you and going, you know what, I spent the last two days with this guy I used to know seven years ago. Yeah, I don't want to get married to you anymore. I'm going to be with him. How, <laughs> how worthless and low and all, I'm laughing. I feel for the guy that was going to get married to her. Now, he do dodged a bullet like Matrix style, right? He pulled the Neo and was like, oh, and, and dodged a bullet. So I'm glad that she did not marry him. He's actually the luckiest one out of the three of them is the guy that she ditched. But can you imagine how that would feel having your soon-to-be wife, your fiance, saying, I hung out. Remember that ex I went out to lunch with that I told you not to worry about? Yeah, I'm going to start dating him again, and, and our wedding is off. <laughs> Jesus. You know, and so many times people will say, you guys, oh, all you bachelors and you guys go in your own way, and you just pick the worst of the worst stories. Yeah, we do. You know why? Because there's so many of them, and it's so easy, and they all have the same similar themes going through them. This guy, man. This guy dodged a bullet. And the other one, the missed Captain Millionaire, nowhere in his head is he thinking, I wonder if she just came back to me because of the money. Nope. He's thinking, score. I got my old college girl back. She left me and I cleaned my act up, act up and now I have a good job and I'm, I'm successful and she misses the time we spent together and I've got her back and I'm a winner. At no point thinking, dude, she just bailed on a guy she was going to marry in a month for you. Don't you think... At some point, she just may see another shiny object and bail on you the same way. Never even crossed his mind. Uh, I thought you guys liked this one. It's only like a five-day-old story, so it's pretty fresh. But uh, guys, if you'd like to support my work, links below. And uh, if you have, thank you very much. And the best way to support me, like, comment, share, subscribe. Only about 38% of you are subbed, so get those subscriptions and notifications going and check out some of my older stuff. Guys, um, this is Better Bachelor. I'm Joker. Remember, if... If she, if she cheats on another guy and then is dating you, you may be that next guy that gets cheated on. If she's going to marry a guy and bails on him to be with you, who says she won't do the same to you if, if she meets somebody better? And isn't there a little party that wonders, is she just with me for the money? Mm -hmm.